This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. from New York, New York, the city so nice they named it twice. That's what they always say. And uh, mm-hmm. as we do on uh, on Thursdays, we uh, check in with our old friend Robert Natale. Hello, Robert. Bon, Hi, Alex. Bon, Nata- you? bon Natale. See. Si. Yeah. I, uh, I've, I didn't actually put your name here. I should put your name here. Right? Let me see here. There we go. And then I go pump and there, there. So everybody knows who you are. There you go. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How about yourself? Yeah, you didn't think you were going to make it tonight, huh? Well, it was kind of close. We had um, tornadoes across central Jersey all evening. Oh, really? Yeah. One of them touched down about five miles from here. Mm-hmm. Um, others touched down along the Jersey Shore, towns like Belmar and so on. Um, pretty destructive winds between 80 and 100 miles an hour. Really? Yeah. So now, mind you, um, I'm going to be 71 years old next month, and I've lived every day in my life in Jersey, except for time I went away, but I was a resident here all my life. And in the first 65 years, I think I've seen two tornado warnings, which didn't amount to shit. Oh, really? And we've had five or six of them in July alone. Wow. Wow. So... You know, things are changing. Yeah, I mean, what you're what you're talking about is a little thing uh, called uh, uh, gl- uh, warming, global warming. Yeah, I, I've heard that. Yeah. yeah, the people on Fox tell me not to believe it. So, oh, okay. Well, then it must no, not. So be, then it must not yeah. must not be so. I'm sure that no. makes your life feel a lot better. No. Yeah. 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 And, so uh, yeah, so it was a it was an interesting evening to say the least. Yeah, yeah. So what's on your mind this week? Anything? So oh yeah, plenty of things. First, let's start with the Olympics. At at, at the at the uh, risk of offending Josh Wheeler, who hates them about as much as I do, I just wanted to throw in some Olympic thoughts. Um, first things first. I always felt the Olympics were sports for non-sports fans. It's just a personal. I agree with you. Yeah. Personal feeling. Yeah. Um, You know, like two-man volleyball, um, water polo. um. My friend loves to talk about luge in the Winter Olympics. Mm -hmm. He says it's the only event that you can partake in while you're dead. Because effectively, all you got to do is lay on the goddamn thing and somebody pushes you down. But that's the Winter Olympics. Yeah, yeah. The summer's got some stupid shit, too. Well, I mean, um, they, they used to have ballroom dancing, but they don't anymore. Yeah, that's right. And skateboarding has now been added. I, I anxiously await 2026 because I'm told that the newest event will be hide and go seek. I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, you know something? I got to tell you. I got to tell you. I, I agree with skateboarding. Okay. Uh, because it is something that has become a sport over the last couple of years. It's a nouveau sport. But there's enough people doing it, and there are enough, uh, there's enough uh, competition in the world in that field that I think it deserves its place in the Olympics, don't you? Yeah, I, I, just, I just don't feel like I have to subject myself to watching it. Yeah. yeah. So I don't, you know. Uh, I, I always had this sense that these events are thought up by four guys in a bar. You know, and they just say, why not uh, seed spitting? You know, we could do well, one for like, accuracy, it, do one you, for distance. Yeah. But do you think that maybe a lot of these different uh, 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 events are created by pressure? Oh, pressure no question groups? about it. Pressure groups, yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that, like, for instance, I don't think that... Uh, uh, skateboarding uh, was brought into the Olympics because they wanted to keep blacks happy because I don't see many black people on skateboards. No. You know, it's a white sport. 
Yeah. 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 White suburban sport to a large extent. I mean, we put basketball in a few years ago, so that takes care of the black sports. Yeah, I suppose so. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Um, Yeah. And the other thing is, I can't watch events. Oh, and by the way, we got softball. Yeah. We got softball for the lesbians. Yes. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's right. Oh my goodness. Um, I, I also have a hard time watching uh, sports, and I say that you know, I say that advisedly. Watching sports that are rated subjectively. You know, like the other night, I flipped on, and they had two women diving at the same time. It was synchronized oh, you know, I've diving. Seen before. Yeah, it's been around for a while. Yeah, well, okay, but, you know, this one got a 9.6, the other one got a 9.5. Come on. You know, I, I, feel like, I feel the same way about this that you do about the Oscars, where, you know, it's a shame in a way you watch, say, well, figure wait a minute, skating wait a minute. Are you in the me winter. The, are you telling me in synchronized uh, diving, the two people who are synchronizing get two separate scores? No, they get one score oh, together. Yeah. One score together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But still, I mean, can you really I mean, can you really separate a nine point six from a nine point five? You know, it it just seems like splitting hairs. To well, me. you know, it's subjective. Well, that's the problem yeah. I have. Yeah. There are times in the winter I'll actually watch the figure skating, but I'll turn off I'll turn off the sound. Because I just appreciate the art of it, as opposed to you know who was better. Well, they've had some uh, argument about uh, uh, what goes on, for instance, at the Winter Olympics with mm-hmm. some of these things. Because what they do is they're scoring based on past performance. Yeah. Right. They're not. Right. A lot of it is on past performance, not on present performance. Right. And here's another tip for you: yeah. Don't be the first skater. Because they can't very well give you a 10 because now, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's nothing that can possibly be better. So in a way, your position has a lot to do with how you yeah. scored too, which but, is, but you know. There's something that has to do with that they add into it the reputation or, or the, the, the uh, what you've done before the Olympics and, and where you uh, are. Uh, I, I, that's what I've heard, you know. Yeah, and the degree of difficulty and so on and so forth, and I don't okay. know. I just I'll tell you I, what I'll I'll tell you what bothers me. Okay, what bothers me the most about all of this is the fact that they are putting a score on a ability of somebody, uh, and I don't like that. Me neither. I, That's I think, my point. I, I think the people should do what they do, and everybody should applaud and say, "Hey, I yeah. like that better than that one." Yeah. But I hate this whole competitive thing. I'm sorry, I've never been a competitive person, and I mean, I'm even bothered by being in this um, in this thing with the Broadcasting Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. you know, uh, which Howard Stern railed against a few years ago, and then accepted the uh, the the induction into the Hall of Fame. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, he had a lot of right things to say, like you know, why did it take him this long to nominate me? I mean, am I not that important yeah. to the business? And I feel somewhat the same way. And I also feel that when it then comes down to voting, all right, yeah. by the nominating committee and by the public, I'm going, you're turning it into a contest. And this yeah. isn't a contest. The, uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inducts people into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame by saying, ACDC and um, Nancy Sinatra and blah 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 and Cher and uh, uh, Fleetwood Mac, you know, but they don't say, hey, everybody, let's vote for them. Well, I'll go you one further. Um, yeah, there I are mean, people that make the argument that this rock performer should be in the Hall of Fame over this rock performer because they sold more records. Oh, that's and not, I always oh, think... Oh, that has nothing to do with it. I always think, you know, that means that dogs playing poker on velvet is mm-hmm. far better than the Mona Lisa. Because, you know, it, it, as a work of art. It's more popular. Yeah, sure. You know. But, I so, mean, the thing is that, uh, you know, that there, you know, there's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they induct people because they say th- these are the people who g- are being inducted this year. They just announced them. They don't Period. hold a contest. Yeah. 
they don't, you know, maybe they vote among themselves to see, you know, who they feel should be put in, but it's not a contest, and this is, right. and I don't, I don't like that. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't feel that I've ever been in a, the only contest I've had is with myself. Yeah, me you too. Know? I mean, you know, I was a competitor as a young man. I was a competitor all my, my young life. I really was, but mm -hmm. in, in, in my case, I competed in things where the winner was discernible. Like I can watch the Olympics, say for example, a hundred meter dash. Somebody shoots a gun and somebody wins the fucking race. You know, put a medal on his chest and good for you, let's move on. Or somebody jumps the highest and it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's tangible. It's something, don't, don't give me the sports where, you know, people hold up cards and say, you know, he was better than him and I just can't. Well, I mean, when, yeah. you, when you've got a bunch of people on a track racing against each other, you have a competition going. Mm -hmm. Okay? But you have a very real competition. Nobody's voting on them or anything else. No. There's either somebody who runs faster than the rest or there isn't. Yep. All yep. right? Uh, and the same thing then is, holds true uh, for um, uh, any number of other sports that you could say are very competitive. Then there are the other sports, like the you know the gymnasts, who yeah. are being literally being voted upon by a bunch of judges who say this person's better than that person. Yeah. Now we've changed the whole nature of the game. You know, it's right. not like one person runs against another person. The first person sure. to get to the the finish line is the winner. See, here's what else amazes me yeah. about the Olympics is. If they decide tomorrow to do a contest for distance spitting, mm -hmm. how is it that the network comes up with two experts out of the woodwork mm -hmm. who can put all kinds of jargon to something as simple as spitting for distance? Yeah. yeah. And the question is, what do these experts do the other three years and 50 weeks? You know, like, do they go back to being cab drivers? Like, what do they do? <laughs> I always wonder that. Like, where did you come up with these where'd fucking you, Where'd you people? find these people? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Where did they come from? And there none, was really a and spitting none, genre? And, and none of them are, are people who have, in the past, yeah. <laughs> done this particular sport. Yeah. But they judge it. Yeah. And well, what are the qualifications? Anyway, you know, I just, I don't know. I just hate, com uh, I, I hate competitiveness in the arts. I hate the Academy Awards. I hate the Emmys, even though I've got a few. You know, I, I hate the uh, rock and roll, uh, the, the uh, what do you call it, the uh, uh, Radio Hall of Fame for exactly the same reason. It isn't a contest. Quality right. is not a contest. Right. What you've done over the years to put you in in uh, the uh, to put you uh, uh, up there with okay well let's make him a uh, you know let's 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 uh, uh, put him up there and make him uh, what do you call it uh, uh, you know I, I I'm kind of out of it tonight because I'm we're going to court tomorrow and I'm just uh, all, I'm all bothered by that. Because now my lawyer says, oh, you might have to pay out $200,000 in past rent. Oh, yeah, fuck you. you no know. big deal for a legend like yourself. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no. Well, I don't think that's going to happen, but, you know. Um, uh, well, I'm an, I'm an avid reader. I just have a hole in my head, that's all. There you go, yeah, yeah right. See, Arr, I don't like that, see. There you go. Yeah. I'm an avid reader and I can't stand people know that I'm an avid reader and they mm -hmm. ask me what's the best book you oh, read I hate this that. year. I oh, hate that. Jesus Christ, that drives me crazy. I hate yep. I hate when they say best movie of the year. Because one's a musical and one's a comedy and one's a drama and one's a this and one's a that and you go, how do you how do you even judge between those? Yeah, how do you judge how do you compare Jojo Rabbit to Frozen? You know, I don't understand. Exactly. You know, like, what's the basis for your comparison? I, I, I just don't get it. Uh, and, and, but, but we have this whole thing about comp competition. I mean, I, what, I, what I get sick yeah. of with the Olympics is they always put up these things. Well, the, the uh, United States has won so much gold, and China yeah. is one behind us, but we're ahead. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. Who cares? It doesn't matter. These are yeah. people who are going and they're giving it their their best, okay? Yeah. 
and all they care about is their personal best. They, in a lot of ways, they're thrilled when they win, but their personal best is what they're fighting against. Of, of course, because yeah. it's the journey, you know, to have yeah. gotten there, and to have pushed yourself beyond limits you thought you had. Yeah. Um, now, what I don't can... get, what I don't get about you, okay, is that you're a veteran gambler, right? I'm, I'm a horse player. We don't gamble. We bet against each other. Do you know? I gotta uh, stop wait, you. Well, explain that for me. I, I, okay. okay. No, I'll, I will. Um, yeah. You know, when you go to a casino and you play roulette, you're mm -hmm. betting against the house, and yeah. you can't win yeah. Yeah. because the house has set odds in their own favor. Right. So the longer you play, the far more likely it is that the house is going to win. beat you. Yeah. Yeah. When you play blackjack, the same is true. When you bet the horses, you're not betting against the house. You're betting against the other horse players. The house is merely taking a cut. Yeah. And they frankly don't care if I win, if you win, or if three guys below us win. They don't care. They're yeah. getting their cut. So you're betting so, against each other because, you, because exactly the more of you right. that bet on a particular horse changes the odds on that horse. That's exactly right. Yeah. So you're looking at somebody who's never bought a lottery ticket in his life. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is to me, that's a gamble. It's just simple gambling. And I'm not interested. Yeah, you're taking a real chance there. Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. interested in that. Yeah. But anyway, what was where were you going with this point? No, what I was going to say is that as a, as a gambler, I was going to say I'm surprised that, that you're not following, you know, the Olympics quite as much, you know, but you don't seem like you, ha do you have that gamblers thing in you where you're, no. where you're, uh, in, in other words, are you just as satisfied when you lose as when you win? Um, that's a complex answer. I'll try to make it simple. The, the answer is I did it for 38 years. I recently retired. Yeah. Because the work just, it started to feel like work after all these years. So yeah. I, I gave it up. But I would have losing days, no doubt. But my theory was I didn't look at things in terms of days. I looked at things in terms of months. Okay. Like I was looking for a positive return over the month, and I would always reassess, gee, you had something of a less profitable month. Why might that have been? Yeah. And I would then reassess like the kinds of uh, approaches I was taking and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's what made it also interesting it was the probably the greatest intellectual exercise i've ever engaged in in my life honestly oh really yeah oh absolutely because you know like it's 50 percent science there was yeah. numbers involved and crunching of numbers involved but there was also the art of when to apply those numbers and in what in what priority so let me ask you this i mean uh, i had a friend who was a was a uh, addicted gambler Yep. And went to GA and saved his life early. Yeah. You know. Do you consider yourself that kind of gambler? No. You're, you're, no. You seem to no. be quite. No. Uh, uh, no. What's the word I'm looking for? You're not so much gambling as you are judging the chances of things. And, yes. And in and, fact, I'll blow your mind. I, I, um, I didn't bet the horse that I thought was most likely to win the race. Mm -hmm. How about that for sounding weird? What I was looking for was I looked at the line on the horses, the odds. Mm -hmm. Having set my own odds, yeah. I then looked for value. So in other words, if I felt the horse should have been two to one, mm -hmm. and I, was, I looked up on the board and I could get five to one, I would make that bet, even though I thought there might be another mm -hmm. horse more likely to yeah. win. Yeah. Because in the long run, I would make a, a more than a decent profit. It was profitable for me for so 38 years. So in the end, I mean, you, do you do it anymore? No, I retired as of uh, November of 2019. Okay, so you, you retired. Yep. Uh, that's probably about the time you started calling us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had time. I had time on my hands. Yeah. Um, so you 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 stopped doing it. First of all, why'd you stop doing it? 
Because, Alex, there was about two hours a night, and I'm talking seven nights a week, holidays, didn't matter how bad you felt. Mm -hmm. There was about two hours of a night of drudgery, just simple drudgery involving numbers, so that when the next day's races began, you were prepared. And that didn't count preparing for the actual races themselves. There were things I had to clock and monitor and take note of so that I could make adjustments. Now, you only bet on races. horses? Yes. Didn't bet on sports at all? Didn't bet on football teams? I, I bet on sports just casually. I never really took it seriously. So you're spe you had a specialty is what you had. Exactly that. Yeah. Yep. And so I did seminars. I've written on mm -hmm. the subject. A part of a group where a thousand of us, about 750 to 800 of us, did it for a full time living at some point in our lives, mm -hmm. including myself. Yeah. Um, so we took it seriously. I did, um, as I said, I, I taught at seminars, wrote on the subject. Yeah. So it was, uh, and it, again, it was an intellectual passion. So in the end, did you come out ahead? Oh, no question about really? it. Really? So you had you, yeah. you knew what you were doing. Every single year I came out ahead. In fact, Alex, for a time, about for about five years, I was taking investment money from others and making wagers for them. The, uh, the worst return on their money was 56% over the course of a year. Mm -hmm. However, I couldn't do it to a large scale because if I did, I would have effectively been betting my own odds down lower and lower okay. and it would have been self-defeating yeah. if you okay. follow. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So if you were to give me $5,000, I could do it. And the worst return in five, six, seven years that I did it for other people, the worst return they got was 56%. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, overall, I mean, did you, you wound up making money? Yeah, well, more than more than a few bucks. So, it, yeah. it, did it supply a living for you? I mean, did it you, or did you, for about two years. Did you have to give up the job at McDonald's? In, I gave uh, up my teaching job, actually. Really? And did it full time. The reason I went back to teaching was because at the time, my wife and I wanted to have a child, and she considered leaving teaching altogether. And so I needed to go back for the benefits. And I thought I could do both. I mm -hmm. could, you know, yeah. wager at night and on weekends and during summers. Yeah. So I returned to teaching. But frankly, the two years I did it professionally, I made much more money than I would have teaching. Really? So yeah. Much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, how did you... I'm not the type that would have wasted my time. Mm -hmm. You know, if it made me. How did your How did money. your wife feel about all this? Oh, she, both wives. I've been married twice, oh, and in I see. both cases, they encouraged it because they knew they knew it you was knew what, lucrative, and yeah. it was also a healthy exercise in my case because it kept me um, kept me active mentally, kept mm -hmm. me sharp. Yeah. To this day, at this age, my memory is sharp as it's ever been. So and that, I that, a that, lot of it to that. You had a, you had two marriages. That first marriage, what kind of odds did you put on it? <laughs> Actually, when I first got into it, I would have bet pretty big money that it would have lasted. Oh, but really? you, know, yeah. you don't win them all, Alex. Uh -huh. <laughs> you should know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're talking to somebody who, you know, was in. But that, that was never, ever, ever, ever an issue. It really wasn't. In fact, if anything, my first wife, mm -hmm. I was new at it, and she was wonderful about it. She encouraged me to, mm -hmm. you know, let, really jump into this. You can do this. So, but um, uh, you know, you you and I, 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 I one time thought mistakenly that the reason you weren't calling is because you said you were doing some writing, but it was some just some writing. It wasn't. It a was book. actually handicapping writing. And it I thought, was well, I thought it would. I, I thought it was a book. But you really you thought about writing a book about this? Um, I actually started to, but the thing was a lot of what I would have included was proprietary knowledge that this group of a thousand I belong to, the Sarton methodologists, um, we kind of share information, share our own research, and mm -hmm. so it would have been stepping on some toes. So let me and ask so you. I started a yeah. few times and then thought, nah, this kind of gets clumsy and I'm I'm going past my my rights 
And so I stopped. So a couple of nights ago, I'm watching YouTube, as I always do. I just go surfing through YouTube. It's just my only thing that I do. It, it's the best way to spend a couple hours. And I come across, I think it was, it might have been, not what's my line, but to tell the truth, or some show like that, some kind of mm -hmm. game show. Or maybe it was a, maybe it was a talk show. But the guest on the show was Jimmy the Greek. Yep, he was a phony. Well, he may have been a phony, but he looked a lot like you. Yeah, well, yeah I suppose. I mean, That's I looked at him yeah. and I said, God, Natalie looks a lot like Jimmy the yeah, Greek. Sort of Mediterranean look, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you say he was a phony? Why? He was, he was kind of like a professional odds maker. He, as a gambler, from what I'm told from people who knew him, he was a, an inveterate loser. Yeah. But he just kind of sold his brand as being a gambling expert. And um, indeed, what he was was a tout, you know, who would sell his picks. Mm -hmm. You never want to buy picks from somebody because if they were any good, they would keep them themselves. You know? Right, exactly. Why okay. would they sell them to you? Right, right. So yeah, uh, yeah, um, uh, but he, um, uh, you know, I felt bad for him though. He he kind of died a lonely man. He ran into um, difficulty by making a, a racial, insensitive, but it wasn't. Racist it wasn't. It, I don't know if it was insensitive. Let me, if I can, if I rem remember it correctly, what he said was. The reason why black Americans are so good at athletics is that in the very beginning they were bred for strength. Because right. back in the back in the days of slavery they looked upon them as like cattle, like animals. Right. right. And they did breed them many times for strength and he claimed that that's why they why they why they do so well at sports and are so adept at it and have the strength for it. And I don't know that it was that you know it was an interesting supposition it wasn't anything racial yeah. it's it's also there are a lot of things that may be true that you just simply can't say over the airwaves you know well no but that was the, the funny part about it was that was the first time i remember somebody really losing their career over something oh, like that yes you're absolutely right yeah, you're and I think there right. were far worse situations like Cosell when he said, look at that little bunny run or whatever. Monkey, monkey. run. He actually used yeah. monkey. Monkey yeah. run. You know, yeah. uh, I always felt kind of bad for Jimmy the Greek because I didn't, I, I didn't think that he was necessarily saying something that couldn't well be uh, within the realm of truth. He wasn't, he wasn't stereotyping anybody. He wasn't doing anything. He was just saying that they were bred. I mean, if you go back to history, you know that they thought of them as 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 like cattle or horses or whatever, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, one of my favorite things to do that you would get a kick out of, one of my favorite things to do, my wife, my second wife would come to me to the track with me on occasion. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite things to do is when I scoped out a race, I could kind of predict how the race would shape up. And so what I would do is, about 10 seconds before the gate opened, I would announce the race before it happened. And the people around me got spooked. In fact, we were sitting behind two old ladies and the one turned to the other and said, he's seen this race before. And we were just getting the biggest charge out of watching them be spooked by how is he, how did he know this horse would take the lead? And so on and so forth, and we just we used to get a kick out wow. of that. Like wow! Wow! You know, I um, uh, you know, I but, but I I just uh, but anyway, I saw Jimmy the Greek, and I said, looks like Natalie. You know, mm -hmm. he, he even sounded a little like you. You know, but it's not like I practiced it. It's not like you practiced it. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, well, before we go, mm -hmm. I want to tell you, I watched, um, I went back and watched the Nuremberg trials. And I'm convinced that the people who killed the Jews in the ovens should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, but I'm also convinced Hitler had nothing to do with it. Right, right. He, has <laughs> he had right. nothing to do with it. <laughs> well, you know, uh, the Nuremberg trials uh, were interesting, you know. Yeah, they, I kind of remember them. Well, they, I don't know, how fair were they? Well, <laughs> you yeah, know, I don't know. I mean, those guys really 
let's say one of them was innocent. Let's just say one of them was. Yeah. Didn't have a chance. No, no chance. No yeah. chance. He yeah. should have asked for a change of venue, first things first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, but it, it was just, it was amazing to me that, uh, you know, if you look at the Nuremberg trials, uh, they, they, for instance, uh, uh, it, it was just a whole, it was really not so much a trial as it was, uh, hey, we want to show you how horrible you were. Yeah, exactly. You know? And I'm not defending them, mind you. I'm just saying yeah. that, yeah. you know, don't don't look upon it as so much a trial as it was a formality. Right. Well, I, I'm getting a big kick out of the Republican deniers trying their hardest. I mean, they're pulling muscles trying to spin this around. Like the other day, McCarthy said, what did Nancy Pelosi know and when did she know it? You know, like, come on, you can do better than that. Uh, those people are amazing. They're really amazing. Yeah, no, it's just it's just beyond the pale. Well, I've only got one person waiting to come on. And I have to do a whole court thing tomorrow. I wonder if I should even even take anybody else but you and then just it's a, it's 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 up to you. You're the yeah. uh, future of Hall of Famer. If yeah, right, right. No, I'm not going to win it. I I'm I'm I I believe that Sally Jesse Raphael is going to win it. And she may well. She had more like uh, common notoriety. Yeah, but her her, but her main TV. notoriety her main notoriety was because of television. Television, no question about you know, it. Uh, not because of radio. Although, well, she, you got you got four votes in this household. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Did you know if you use a separate email address, you can vote again? Yeah, Oops, I know. Oops, I oops, say oops. Uh, no, I I. By the way, I went online and I, I found out who the nominating committee is. And one of them is uh, uh, Dave Gorab, who was my program director at Sirius XM. Oh, wow. So at least I think I probably got a vote there. I got an in. You know, he was wow. always a big fan of mine, even though when they got rid of me, he got, they got rid of me, but he was a big fan. And, uh, and also Walter Sabo, who's a big fan. Sure. So we'll have to wait and see, you know. Yeah. Uh, who yeah. knows, but I... You know, um, uh, I know all, uh, all you people are voting out there, but just remember that there are those people in Philadelphia who still have a popular radio program. Yeah. And they right. can go on the air and say, vote for me, vote for me, vote for me, you know. Yeah. And But who knows, you know. I mean, I'm just not expecting it. You know, it would be nice. But then I got to buy it. I got to rent a tuxedo. Oh, my. Yeah, I don't want to show up. Tuxedo. You mean you don't own one for all the Emmys that you won? You know something? I said at one point that if I got a second Emmy, I would go out and buy a tuxedo. Yeah, that didn't uh, happen. And I never did. Yeah. But I did. Have, we, I think we did. Have, did we have to wear? Yeah, we had to wear tuxedos to the Emmys. Yeah. No kidding. So, so I wore. An, I, I I rented my tuxes, and after a while, I said, "I'm sick and tired of renting tuxes." You know. Hmm. Where did and you, I was where did almost have, went to buy one. What? Where did you have the most artistic freedom? Was it at Sirius simply due to the nature of it not being commercial radio? But I think I had a lot of freedom there. I, yeah. I think the most freedom I've had is any time I was making a station a lot of money. Yeah, of course. Then they let you do anything you want to. I could go in and take a crap on the general manager's desk and they go, yeah. oh, Alex, cut it out. Yeah, cut it out. You're you know, such a kidder. Yeah, you know, I mean, so I, I think I had a lot of freedom in San Francisco uh, because I, the show was making millions of dollars a year for the radio station. So that put me on a, you know, let's not let's not give him a bad time. He's the cash cow. Yeah. Uh, but Sirius XM, for something where there was no money value involved, I think right. was the freest I've ever had. Uh, I would say for the most part, but I got fired. So how how free was I? Free you know, I simply yeah. did what I wanted to do, and they didn't like it, and they got rid of me. Was there some place that just didn't get you? Just didn't get oh, your style. Oh, I think I think at at uh, Sirius XM there were people there who didn't get me. Really? Yeah. Um, there was a guy by the name of Mel Carmisen who was the guy who discovered Howard Stern and ran Infinity radio stations and hired him away from WNBC 
or hired him when he got fired and made him into a star, okay, mm -hmm. by believing in him. And when I went to Sirius XM, uh, I was afraid that, you know, Mel would get rid of me when he came in to be general manager, but quite the opposite. One day I see him in the in the break room and I said, Mel, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Alex Bennett. He says, you don't have to introduce yourself, Alex. I'm a big fan. Hmm. You know, and as long as Mel was there, I had somebody there who understood what I did. Right. Okay. The minute Mel left, it was a battle. For you know, mm. because the people that were left didn't understand what I did. They didn't understand my style well, or you know. Well your your style was, was hard to categorize, wouldn't you say? I mean, in a way you kinda you kinda played it as it felt, you know, like you, you Well, kinda, thank you, that's a compliment. No, I see you know, it that way. But it's a you compliment. You played it as it yeah. laid, you know. Yeah. Whichever way the, the flow was going, you let it breathe. And yeah. as a result, you couldn't be categorized or pigeonholed as a, you know, blankety-blank kind of performance. Well, the most freedom I've had is here. Well, of course. But yeah. it doesn't really matter to me. No, I guess not. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's too well, easy. the boss won't fire you here. It's, it's too easy, you know. Yeah. And... Uh, but anyway, so listen, we'll talk next week unless I've been uh, thrown out of this apartment. You know? I don't know what we would do if we ever had to move out of this apartment. There's oh, so much brother. crap here that I don't know even where we would put it. You, 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 would, you would need another background for starters. Another background? Yeah. 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 Maybe like a basement window or something. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. But I don't, well. I don't think that's going to happen. But Me you know, neither. But, you know, who knows? I mean, I just... I, I just don't know how, well, I don't want to get into it. It's just a question of, you know, what did we do wrong? Yeah, <laughs> You right. know, that we should exactly. suddenly be the victims, you know. Yeah. So, anyway. I think it'll work out. Uh, uh, yeah, I hope so. Hey, listen, I love talking to you. You're smart and you're decent and you're, you're cool. You Thanks know? so much, Alex. Yeah. It's always a thrill for me. Well, let's do it again next week, okay? Okay, great. Be Ladies well, Ladies and huh? gentlemen, that's... Robert Natali. Okay. Bye bye, Robert. Bye bye. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen. Robert is disappearing now and going off into the uh, into the uh, the vapor. Uh, and let's talk to our citizen panel here, who some of them have been waiting for a while. Uh, thank you all for waiting. Hello, Jeffrey. Hello, Alan. And Tom Yamaguchi for crying out loud. Love to see Hi. you, Tom. What a pleasure. We're just talking to Robert. Was that pre-recorded? No. Oh, it just seemed like you didn't say goodbye to him. You just this turned on. Okay. Would have been nice for him to join us. Well, I run the show. <clears throat> wow, that's it's about time. when you're running the show, you can do it. I had him do it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I wasn't on that night. I watched it later. Yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you're not a big fan of the show anyway. Uh, hello, oh. Jeff, and hello to Tom Yamaguchi. Tom, long time. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah? What's up? Yes. Um, it's not easy to get on. There's a lot of things going on in my life. Really? Like but, what? Anything that you want to talk about? or Not here, no. <laughs> oh, well, give me a call and let's talk but, about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'd like, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> continue. As you were saying. As I was saying? Yeah, as you were saying. So. Oh, okay. Well, I, I just, uh, you know, just uh, thought I would pop in and see how it were, would work tonight. And um, yeah, you liked hearing what uh, Robert said. One of the things is mm -hmm. I was sort of like, once again, I brought this up before when you brought it up with uh, Jimmy the Greek. Yeah. Um, the, the, the problem is he's was got into an area where he has no knowledge had no knowledge at right all. right and and there is no scientific basis behind what he had to say there may in not fact, be a, in fact let me let oh, me put oh, it this way okay all right continue if they were into breeding mm. they did a terrible job <laughs> <laughs> because for one thing the 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 plantation owners were knocking up their their the the, the female slaves Mm -hmm. So, so much for that a part of the experiment. Yeah, right. They didn't know anything about genetics. The the more the, the more the more reason the more sensible answer mm -hmm. is that 
it's a totally socialization. In other words, this was the avenue that black people, especially black males, were given to succeed in a society. Yeah, but wouldn't you say it has nothing to do? It has nothing to do with any kind of and 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 what we're talking about as far as breeding purposes. There, you know, athletic skills. There's no breeding. There's no breeding gene in that. You don't there, think. You don't think that the slave owners, because they bred horses, they bred cattle, that they didn't look upon these people who they thought of nothing more than chattel. Okay. Uh, for the most part, unless they were a decent person, and it was very hard to find them back then in the South and even today. Uh, but uh, uh, that they didn't do some kind of what they considered breeding to try and get a stronger black person? No, many of them were just, just bought. They were already born, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, you know, you can, you, can, you can build up your body, but you can't pass those genetic characteristics onto your children. Well, one of the things that it could, you know, you may have a, a, good, a point there. Uh, hold on a second. I just want to see somebody wrote me some kind of message and like I've got some problem here or something. Uh, what did it say? No, no, not that. No, no. It doesn't. Oh, the, uh, uh, yeah, I'm the trying. Zoom isn't on. Isn't on uh, YouTube. Oh, I see. I did that the other night too. Mm. I forgot to put. You're listening to me, folks. It's the radio thing, but I forgot to turn on the. Uh, yeah, hey, uh, Brian just sent me a text saying yeah. it's not on YouTube. Yeah, I'm. It I, is on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube, but it. it what it was happening? They had a picture of me. Oh God! My that visual. I didn't. I didn't. I did this the other night too, and mm -hmm. I don't know why. I. I must. I, I'm just getting too old for this, you know. Uh, but no. What I was saying is, is that that some of it could be because they were uh, tribes in Africa and they lived under very harsh circumstances that they also became stronger. And that's, of course, one of the reasons they were probably considered such a fine for the slave owners. Does that make sense? No. No. Okay. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that has anything to do with genetics. Yeah. I think it's just yeah. It's just that in our society this mm -hmm. was one of the few ways that, that blocks in fact, you remember I'm sure you'll remember this. Years ago there yeah. was a um, a documentary on NBC, as I remember, mm -hmm. and they were talking about uh, about basketball, and they were saying that uh, at the time, around the turn of the century, you know, the, yeah. you know, the early twentieth century, the the most successful basketball players were Jewish, and there was a. Do you remember that? Yes, I think. Well, I mean, I wasn't around the. Oh, the turn but of, I don't know. Do you remember the time? Because I know you talked about it on the show. You mean the turn of the last century? San Francisco. Century? Really? Did I talk about this it? This was from the 90s. Oh. And, and there was a, it was a document, and they were talking about that they actually believed that there was something about Jewish men mm -hmm. that uh, made them best adapted to playing basketball. Well, not anymore. <laughs> See, <laughs> you see, so that sort of like negates the whole argument. I, I, it's a, it's folklore. I, I, I can't understand. I, I can't remember saying anything like that, because I don't think I had any knowledge of basketball to that extent. No, I, I it's just that you saw the documentary that I saw. Oh, okay. And you mentioned. I know you saw it because you talked about oh, it yeah. on the show. Oh, yeah. Okay. So there was a documentary. Okay. What of of uh, now? When you say the turn of the century, you mean the nineteen hundreds? You mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think I might have yeah. watched a documentary, and then I was just saying what I saw in the documentary. You know, that they yeah. were basically Jewish players. Yeah. I mean, you didn't have black basketball players no. back then because of the in the the racism in the country, uh, yeah. and the fact that they just weren't allowed into the sport. Uh, just it's like you know they, they weren't allowed into baseball until Jackie Robinson. You know, mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> well, thank you, everybody. That's <laughs> that, was, yeah. that was my two cents. Yeah, no. And I did vote. 
I did vote for you for the Radio Hall of Fame. Well, it's good. How many times did you vote, by the way? So far, just once. Oh, okay. Well, if you have more than one, uh, uh, I do have. I have a Gmail account. Oh, you I have can a do a podcast account. Oh, well, then you could uh, you could uh, vote using those too. And I vote for Steve Set Van Zandt too. Oh, me he too. was I running on the other ca category, a music category. Steve Van Zandt is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They've too, right. actually been pushing him on serious. I just like him because Steve Van Zandt. Yeah. yeah, I think more as a musician really than a DJ. But I just voted with I like Bruce. Oh, 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 no, no, no! Oh, 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 I know who you're talking about. I thought you were talking about. There's a, there's a radio guy in San Francisco named Van oh, really? Zandt. Uh, yes, you're yeah, talking about little, you're talking about little Stevie. Yeah, 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 right. that's him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was he's very good at the, what that little show he does. You know, he, he he plays a lot of good like no name bands that you never that I never heard yeah, of. I mean, I mean he, he, wanna, he knows he, he knows his music obviously. He really does. I love listening to him when he does the. Show. I do listen to serious for him, Alex. So when he's on, I'll write down the stuff. I got to get this. But album. you don't listen to anything else, right? Sometimes Howard, when he talks oh, about oh. the only people I like, is, oh. I'll be honest, I like Howard and I like you, of course, and I like Steve and I like my music. I like my music, so I always like listen to any of that stuff. Yeah. You can listen to music 24-7, yeah. Did you uh, try the coffee that I sent you, Tommy? Not yet, but okay. I'm going to make it tomorrow morning. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, you for sending you. him coffee. Yeah, French vanilla. <laughs> Jeez you know, almighty. I know. You know about this, Tom? Tony, <laughs> oh, coffee? Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> Cody, coffee, yes. Yeah, he's just, he, yes. doesn't, take, take, him, he doesn't take the coffee no. very well. Yeah. yeah. I stay up all night and watch old TV then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, do. I don't want to watch you later. Well, get Sometimes it, I watch Jack Benny. I'll, I'll flip it around, Alex. Whatever amuses me. My brother's like, "What year are you in?" Forty-eight right now. <laughs> You're in what? Nineteen forty-eight. Because usually I'm watching something old. He wants to know what what decade in my year. Yeah, because I always have some something to watch. Well, I uh, you know I get stuck on YouTube. I'm, I'm like this YouTube. YouTube it's like a black freak. hole. Huh? It's like a black hole. I love it because I can always watch something. About anything. I watch well, no, you movies. watch something, and then all of a sudden something pops up next to it. Yeah, I'm and watching that. Here we go. It. And before you know it, I've watched a Jack Benny show. I've watched an interview of Letterman with, like, somebody, you know, like Regis, and then it's something else. I mean, I, I can go for – I've, I've literally gone for five hours just watching. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm like you, Alex. I love old news. Like, I listen and to your old show on the YouTube. it's funny. People who I think – would not be addicted to YouTube are my business manager, who I didn't think even know what YouTube was, says he's stuck on YouTube. It's, you know, and then anything, like let's say you wanna do something, you gotta, I wanna buy comic books, how do I buy comic books? You just put in there buying comic books and all these things come up, tell you how to buy comic books. I mean, yeah, and, and, and he's got little talk shows, like I met somebody at a comic show, this kid called himself Comic Tom, young kid and he actually had like a show he was doing on youtube like the yeah. books he liked i was like you know what i started watching the show we were messaging then i went to the new york like two years ago i says oh it's commentary he says tony I says, yeah how you doing it's like i saw his show on youtube he's there with his father you know and his father would come on the show and like this is what i read and this is what my son's read. i thought it was cool yeah, I said. yeah so i mean it, it's really it's amazing it's amazing and it i just is. i mean like uh, and like the doing the show here i needed to a while back I needed to figure out how to get pictures from Skype onto the video here. And I went online, and I didn't know how to use this one program, and I went on YouTube, and there are about 10 people telling you how to use it, you know? So, I mean, you can get an education in almost anything. Um, I love the, I love, but I know what I like, Alex. I like the old news. Like, I listened to your old show. I sent it to your messenger from 1975. And you know what I like when you were talking about like New York back then? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to like remember as a kid, because I was like six, it's like, I like when you talk about the old, like, you know, you were talking about how New York was. You gotta listen, actually, how do they get that air check? It is like perfectly clear. I, you, you know something, I have gone online and just put in my name and been amazed at what I find. I found quite a few over the last Stuff week. that I didn't know there was even a recording of. Well, you were bitching about your apartment, your, the, the apartment you lived in, mm -hmm. about the, uh, I guess whoever ran it, they were doing a bad job because you were really laying it on pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, I but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll find TV stuff that I did that I, uh, I, I don't have a copy of it. So thank you all for putting it up. So I finally do have a copy of it. I sent it to your messenger if you can look, it's perfectly clear. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh do you get if if and when you win this prize with the uh, broadcasters is it like uh you know like some of the other big prizes do you get like $100,000? No, you get nothing. That sucks. In fact, I think you have to fly yourself to Chicago. <laughs> and pay for the out. tuxedo. You know. <laughs> so, yeah. No. No. You know, I mean, uh but, uh, you know, I mean, uh, who knows? What, uh, it's not going to Maybe happen. they'll give you a trip to Chicago in the middle of winter. I don't want to fly to Chicago, okay? <laughs> I don't want to wear a tuxedo. So there's a part of me that goes, I don't want to win this goddamn thing. Oh, you know? Come on. We're voting for you like crap. I'm sharing this like mad. You got to win. This is in the bag. There's no way she wins, Sally. No way. What do you mean there's no way? Because you only your vote is only 125th of the vote. But we're sharing this like mad. I'm no, no, but all like the mad. votes that do that, okay, only yeah. count for 125th. The other 24 votes are the members of the nominating committee. Oh, oh. you yeah. think they're going to decide it then? And I, I looked at them and I went, do these people know who I am? You know, I mean, they knew enough of who I was to nominate me, you know. But, well, uh, maybe we can sway him a little bit. Yeah, uh, send some people. Promise them a dream date with Donald Trump or something no, like that. No, promise them that, they, <laughs> that they, they, you'll keep let, allow their arms to keep working. Absolutely. Hmm. So what's happening out in San Francisco, uh, 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 Tom? Mm -hmm. You've got uh, you got the whole thing with Newsom. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah that's how, how does that look? I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that uh, that he won't get recalled. Um, I think they they certainly have a, a better campaign than Gray Davis did. I think uh, Gray Davis. Well, Gray Davis also started with a big liability. He wasn't that popular. Yeah. I think uh, I think Newsom is is um, has a lot more support than, than Davis did. And I especially think, didn't, didn't they say that Gray Davis's biggest problem was he didn't think he was going to be thrown out? And so he didn't do that much to prevent it from happening? Am I, am I, I think they were just, they were just confused as to how to respond. And, you know, like, you know, they were, they weren't sure whether to put up a candidate just in case he was recalled. And that was why the, uh, um, the lieutenant governor uh, Bustamante uh, mm -hmm. went ahead and uh, jumped in and and uh, put a, put his name on the ballot. And he came in second, actually, as I remember. Yeah. But he also just tore the party apart over that too. So yeah. He, well, here, here he ended up ruining ruining his own career. Here's what's so terrible about this whole thing: they go to vote. Correct me if I'm wrong. They go to vote, and what they're voting on is the recall of Gavin Newsom. So you vote, yeah, I want to recall him, I don't want to recall him. All mm -hmm. right? Then if you want to recall him, you vote for somebody. In well, other words, it's all on the same ballot. Yeah, right, so, exactly. And and yeah, then vote, the person yeah. the person who wins and right now there's something like what, 55 candidates something like that? I think there's only 40 this this this, this time. Election. There were 135 in that case. Yeah, 135 there's in the first. There's no election. Democrats and, running except news. And it isn't like you have to get over 50% of the vote in order to win. You no. can get 5% of the vote and win if nobody has 5%. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. so that way you really get the worst possible human being that you can find in there as governor. Right now I hear that uh, the guy who's going up against me in the uh in the uh, Oh, Larry Elder. Larry Elder uh, who's going up against me in the the Hall of Fame category uh that uh, that he's in the lead. I mean not against you know, he's, I, he's in the I, lead I mean, of all the, all the all the candidates. All the candidates, running. yeah. John Cox, yeah. I heard, was in the lead for the Republican Party. Really? Well, the latest that if you listen to Fox, it's it's at Larry Elder. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, John Cox really turned his can uh, his own campaign when he came the first day, he announced his campaign, and he had a. Uh, a grizzly bear chained up. <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, but here's here's the thing and, though. I mean, all Elder has to do is get one, you know, a, a slight 
tenth of a percent more than the person who comes in second, mm -hmm. you know, in order to become yeah. governor. And that's, that's what's so ridiculous about it. That's what's so horrible about the whole process. You know, I hate you, calls. Well, you should you only... Know, now I think of it, when I, when I, when I, I came on tonight uh, on YouTube, you know, they play commercials. There was actually, they had uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren actually doing a commercial against the recall. Against the recall. And, yeah. Against the recall, yeah. Vote no, vote no on the Republican recall. Recall is there so no, so right. There's but but a lot you don't more, want to use. There's a lot of commercials. There's a lot of big name Democrats that are appearing in commercials and being quite vocal about about the recall. So I think that's a big difference a between lot now of and then. being spent in this. What's that? A lot of money is being spent in mm -hmm. this. Do you recall. see any ads for Caitlyn Jenner? No. Mm. Uh, no. Huh? No. What what did you say, Tony? Is she really running ads or no? She's running. I still is that Bruce Jenner? I still can't get that's over Bruce, that. That's Bruce that's the yeah, former Bruce, Bruce Jenner. Jenner. When my mother yeah. saw that she thought he had a breakdown. I says, Mom, she always remember the one the Wheaties box. I mean I'm not making fun, <laughs> I still can't get over that. It's what, like holy moly. What, what, what do you mean you can't get over it? Well, she because we, we always remember from the '76 or something Olympics. Remember, he won all those gold. Yeah. My mother's like, she was always confused with. It. I guess she couldn't understand it. Well, really, you well know. I don't know what's not to understand. Well, she thought he was still a guy. I was trying to explain it to one time. He was going over her head. I couldn't do it. My sister tried. Uh, let, let's go to Tom because he knows b better about the nomenclature of this sort of thing. <laughs> um, well, one way one way Tony to look at it is that Jenner has always identified ha, has a, a female gender identity. Yeah, personally but in, was, in his but, private but was, life. Was, yeah. was, was not open about it. Okay. So when she decided to be open about her real true gender identity, then she was able to live full time as a woman. I guess she it was more like she was so surprised with the time because she she just remembers him as the athlete, I guess. And she and as I was trying to explain it to someone, my sister, but it was going over her head because she's like, I don't understand. So what does it mean then? I said, Well, you know. And then after a while, see, you know, I I mind. can't uh, completely grasp what goes through somebody's mind like Jenner's in such a process because obviously I don't have that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but you do have that situation. You have a male gender identity. It just happens to match your body. But yeah, well, you have, that's you, a good, that's you a feel, good, yeah. You feel that you are a male, like I feel as a male. If you look at my name, you notice I put my, my personal pronouns there. Yeah, what, you know, uh, he and Because him. I feel that people should be able to be able to identify their personal pronouns and so the other people can understand why, that why, and you, not misgender someone. why'd you push put down he slash him because Do, those are my personal pronouns uh, uh, oh those are your personal pronouns uh, those are my preferred personal pronouns well those would be my now, pronouns too wouldn't they if you do want if you identify as as male or he or him then you would put the you could say these are my personal pronouns yeah okay why if you're gender that? binary you could say my personal pronouns are they them they them or how about mm -hmm. he he she or them he, oh i'm getting my head <laughs> my head started to spin. well there are people who do that too and i just that's what i get confused you see i mean the <laughs> thing the thing I'm, i've mentioned this on any number of occasions the thing that i find kind of amazing is, is that in my life i've i've known quite a few transgender people uh, mm -hmm. I always like to brag that I knew all three transgenders that are sung about by Lou Reed in Walk on the Wild Side. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, the, the, the most female of them in presence was Candy Darling, who was just gorgeous, you know, and a lovely person and a lovely woman. And I, when he, she would walk into a room, I would kiss her hello, you know and respect what she wanted to be. 
Uh, the other two were Holly Woodlawn, who was kind of goofy and did kind of a comedic character, uh, almost a satire of women in a way. Mm -hmm. And the other one was Jackie <clears throat> Curtis, who uh, used to walk around wearing a dress with a five-day growth, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I, 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 I was quite aware of this and know, knew these kind of people and hung out with them and even did stuff with them with some of the Andy Warhol people. Um, and, and so when all of a sudden we're presented with this whole thing about transgenders, although in those days we didn't call them transgenders, we had another term. Uh, well, you know, uh, one thing is, it, you, you know, you think that, you know, when you think of, of Jackie Curtis, mm -hmm. you might consider, might be a more appropriate term would be transvestite. And maybe well, transvestite was the term that I remember. Okay. Well, transvestite is different from gender identity. Well, I mean, I, in the you, case you of... Can, you, yeah. can, you can identify as male, a mm -hmm. male, have a male gender identity, mm -hmm. or, yeah, and still have a desire to, to dress up in women's clothing. Well, in the case of Candy Darling, this was a person who looked very much the woman, you yeah. know? Uh, and did she she uh, did she ask that you refer to her as a she? Or I her? always did, and I didn't. She okay. didn't ask me to. I was very happy to do it. I did that because uh, my feeling was that she carried it off so perfectly and so wonderfully, and with such class that she deserved to be called she. You well, know, she had well that you you did that as out of out of respect out for of her. absolute and that, was, was, her, if, and if, that is her, yeah. was her identity. Yeah. Uh, in the case of uh, of Hollywood Lawn, Hollywood Lawn uh, was getting laid a lot by women. Okay, so it wasn't a sexual identity, but it was. I think it was almost. It was like a cross dressing thing. Mm -hmm. And in the case of uh, Jackie Curtis, I could never figure that one out. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're going to wear a dress, at least shave. <laughs> you know, I mean, but I, and I never understood that one. But Candy Darling, and she asked me on her deathbed, she she wanted me to come and videotape her, and I couldn't bring myself to do it. But I just I just adored Candy. She was just a wonderful person who carried herself with great grace and dignity. You know, so if anyway you want to know what she looked like, I guess you could probably go online and find her. You know. She was one of the Andy Warhol superstars. Right. But so was uh, Hollywood Lawn and so was Jackie Curtis. So, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it, it, you know, so when you talk about Caitlyn Jenner, uh, you know, I mean, I think Caitlyn Jenner makes a pretty bad looking woman. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Uh, but well, I, she's not. She she's she's a lot older than she used to be. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I was a better looking person when I was younger too. Yeah, uh, but I, but I'm just wondering how good uh, he could pull it off even when he was younger, you know. Uh, but he was, you know, he was doing he was dressing up at home and everything. I mean, supposedly, uh, uh, what's her name, Jenner, um, uh, Mom, Mama Jenner. Uh, uh, was uh, he, she knew he was doing it? He was doing it all the time around the house, privately, well, you know. And that rumor, she, by the way, that rumor was running around. And and when I first heard it, I just didn't believe it. I thought it was just some kind of you know, you know, one of those kind of uh, uh, urban legends, okay. And it wasn't an urban legend. It was. It turned out to be real, you know. So. Well, I'm happy for her. Oh, I'm happy for, for her too. Listen, you know, it's fine. You know, I, I think people should be allowed to live the life they want to live and mm -hmm. not have to do it with anybody <clears throat> complaining about how they're doing it. And like John Larkin, we know, is voting for Caitlyn Jenner because he believes that too. Right, John? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I respect anybody that, uh, you know, goes through a, a sex change or something like that. I totally respect that. Well, this that isn't because, exactly a sex change. Well, I mean, anyone that, that you know. Yeah, because a sex change oh, is a real commitment. Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, yeah. Uh, it, 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 but they, you don't just do that because it's, you know, like getting a tattoo or, or you know, getting a, uh, 
a pierce well, your ears or something. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Tom, but just because somebody like brute like uh, Caitlyn Jenner becomes physically looks like a woman and dresses like a woman and maybe gets some breast put on them or whatever, still doesn't mean that they don't still have sex heterosexually. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, about yeah, that? yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. No, of I, course. I really don't know. I think it depends on the individual. There's a bar down the street that um, it's just this dive bar <laughs> on uh, Turk Street called. Um, Listen, you Camp live in Garden. the Tenderloin, every street yeah. corner mm -hmm. in that. In Charlie's, but you know, straight people go in there, and but you know, a lot of trannies hang out there, mm -hmm. and there's, there's a lot of trannies that are are uh, heterosexual. They just yeah. now we know where John's getting laid. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not into the. I don't. I don't like the beards. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Let me let me ask you something, uh, Tom. How do you feel? I saw they changed the gay rainbow flag. They, really? they, they oh, because they added the pink, the transgender. They did the. They did a thing on the side, which breaks up the rainbow in kind of a triangle. And and uh, I do, I can't remember what's in there. There's something, some lettering or something. But I just I I I so liked that rainbow flag that I kind of mm -hmm. consider it destroyed. You know. You no, know, it'd be inter it's a shame that uh, Gilbert Baker, who designed the original rainbow flag, um, it's a shame that he died a few years ago. I because he would be the person really to to, to the comment. I think he would approve. Do you think you to tell okay. you the truth? I I think that that anything that expands because the whole point of the rainbow flag is to to uh, is a message of inclusivity. Mm -hmm. You know, every people, everyone is being included, and if you're adding transgendered people to that, you're increasing the inclusivity. I would say he probably would have a problem with it. Didn't Harvey Milk's lover develop that flag? I don't know. Well, it, I, I don't, I, I, I don't think uh, Gilbert uh, Baker was involved with Harry, Harvey Milk. Okay, somebody told me a long time ago that Harvey Milk's partner, when Harvey died, uh, uh, came up with the, the uh, gay flag. Here, here, here we no. go. Let me, let me show you here. No, I think the flag was even um, developed For, before uh, Harvey Milk died. You guys can't see it. Because wow. I, it, it's it's uh, on the thing here, but here to everybody, it's what I'm talking about. Is you've got the rainbow flag, basically this is the old rainbow flag, and then what they've done is they put this triangle, uh, not, not half I've a seen it. half a triangle. You see what I'm? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, well, and and then it's got white, it's got pink, it's got blue, it's got brown, it's got black. What is that? Trying I, to be all inclusive. I've never seen. I've never seen that. I drive through San Francisco a lot. Well, it's the new official flag. I I've mean, never seen it. That's I, I don't know. You know, if there was a meeting of gays that got together and said this is the new flag, <laughs> but that's the current the uh, the current flag. And I just always liked the rainbow flag. I thought it was. I thought it said something very important about us and about what's right and what's wrong. You know. And I, uh, I, 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 I just, huh? What was the musical that had the rainbow flag in it? What do you mean? What musical? Didn't it, there was a musical, something about a rainbow. It was? Never mind. Well, I don't know. Well, I, it, don't bring it up unless you know what it was. Well, I don't, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I mean, I, you know, um, well, the Wizard of Oz? No. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Wizard of Oz had a rainbow front flag in it. You know. I'm not saying they had a flag. Never mind. <laughs> they didn't have this kind of flag in there. Okay, I believe that. I, what, what was the What was the musical? Something over the rainbow. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's a song from Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Thank you. But there was no I, rainbow flag in it. I didn't say there was a flag in there. She went over. He, she wanted to go over the rainbow because there was a rainbow there because that's where life would be better for her. And right. you know what I learned from Shecky Alex? He said the year the Wizard of Oz came out. I could be wrong. That was the greatest year for uh, motion pictures. Oh yeah. No. No question about it. That was the. 
if you go back and look at all a lot of great movies all coming out in a single year. Really? That was the year of Citizen Kane. Well, Citizen Kane was actually a year later when it was finally released. But that was the uh, uh, Gone with the Wind came out that year, you know. He said Wizard of Oz wasn't that big when he read when it came out. No. No. It wasn't that, that it wasn't. Wizard of Oz was a huge book for many years. It was well, they're was, huge books. I mean, L. Frank yeah. Baum, who was the creator of it, yeah. um, also was the guy who owned the movie rights. He put out movies of The Wizard of Oz long before the one we know. Yeah, I know, I know. You know, yeah. and uh, they weren't that big a success, but he did Ozma from Oz and a whole bunch of the books as movies, as silent films. Didn't it come out like 39 or 40 we or just, something That's like what that? we were just saying, 1939. 39. It was a great oh, year for that. movies. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't listen. Yeah, well, if I'm correct, it was the big first uh, color color film. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Well, I mean, the first big color film. No, it wasn't. No, well, it was bigger. Becky Sharp was the first color film, and three color Technicolor, and it was 1936, and uh, it was a major production. Uh, the Wizard of Oz was directed by the same guy who did Gone with the Wind. Really? He directed both pictures in the same year. Talk about hitting a home run. Yeah. Um, what was his name? Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh God. Victor. Victor Fleming. Victor Fleming. Okay. Yeah, Victor Fleming. <laughs> and he he directed both the Wizard of Oz and and. Uh, um, no, I know that. Yeah, although the over the rainbow s sequence was done when she was singing black and white and so on, that was done by uh, what's his name, the, the women's director, the guy who the women loved having him direct them, but he did it because Fleming had to go do Gone with the Wind, and I think he then left Gone with the Wind and ran right over, and did uh, the Wizard of Oz. Uh, so here, here, if you go to the rainbow flag to the LGBT community, mm -hmm. it was adopted in the same year that Harvey Milk was murdered, 1978. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Well, Tom well, was saying that he thought it was before that. So well, it was, uh, seven, well, one thing it was November 78 that um, that uh, Milk and Moscone were were killed. Come on, Tom. You don't and know, so, right? if it appeared at the Pride Parade that year, that was back in the previous June. Couldn't have, couldn't have appeared at the Pride Parade. Why not? Oh, Why not? I, I guess, was there a Pride? I guess there was. Oh yeah. Bobby oh yeah. Harvey <laughs> Milk is seen no. in in a in a car in during the Pride Parade. Uh, yeah. So the next year, I mean, when uh, he died that year, they came out with the with the with the flag. You I didn't start November? seeing it till a few years later, though. I don't think it made its way November across the country. November 1978. Do you know the date? What? No. Why a should I? Not the exact date. It was later. It was. It was a week after Jonestown. It was, it was it really? Really? Yeah, it was a week wow. after Jonestown. Yeah. I didn't know Jonestown was. Wow. It, it, yeah. it was November 27th. Yeah. Yeah. And be, I, I wasn't living. Heart. I wasn't living in the Bay Area at the time, but. Uh, I, I was, you were but, from Hawaii, Tom. I thought you what's were that? from Hawaii. Why do no. you think you were from Hawaii? I, no. I don't know. <laughs> Boy, watching you, the show too many times. You watch this show in a coma, don't you? <laughs> Boy, that's I was why your numbers the, uh, are so high. What were you going to say, John? I was at the White Knight riots out in front of City Hall. Mm -hmm. and that was in 79. That when uh, when Dan White was found not guilty of murder but manslaughter, yeah. I was living in the city, and I walked down and watched it. I mean, I didn't get involved in it. That was so oh. weird. Guy goes in, kills two people: the mayor of San Francisco and Harvey Milk, who's a city councilman, and or then, supervisor, county supervisor. supervisor. Super, was he a supervisor? First in cold blood. Yeah, county supervisor. Okay. Yes. Yep. In cold blood, in absolute cold blood, and gets away with it. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, well, the Twinkie. How? He used the Twinkie defense. The Twinkie. He that was the Twinkie defense. Well, it was diminished capacity from eating the, too much junk food. Too you much know, junk. there was way too much thought in how he snuck into the building to pass security through an open window, 
Uh, this Twinkie defense was bullshit. Yeah, but it worked. It worked, and I think it worked partially because of, of homophobia that still existed very badly at the time. Wouldn't you agree, Tom? And that uh, you, it was hard to find a jury that didn't uh, have a certain amount of homophobia going for them. I don't know. Um, I think he just might have, you know, just put on a good defense that he was really depressed. You know. Um, and a lot of cops in this What, fi what finally everybody. happened to, to Dan White? He committed, he committed suicide. Himself. Committed yeah. suicide, yeah. Yeah. You know why? So in a way, you could say he really didn't get off. No. You know, no, uh, he committed suicide. I think he committed suicide out of pure guilt. You know, yeah, I think he yeah, committed yeah. suicide to save his family. I, I, I think that uh, uh, Moscone was mobbed up, or at least connected somehow to the mob. No. Harvey Milk was the the most powerful big game. Why are you saying? No. Why are you saying no. he was mobbed up? Because no. he had mob connections. Moscone. How do you? No, how, you know, you know something. He was Italian. Is that the reason why? That's what I, I don't know. It's what I heard. Yeah, I didn't hear no. he was mobbed up. No, he I mean, did he not have mob connections. He was a pretty liberal, no. uh, he was a pretty liberal mayor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. I will Google him. I, uh, oh, I yeah, it's going to say mobbed up in Google. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, you know. Um, you know, the, the, that whole notion. Okay, well. So I, I think that the, the gays had, were gaining power, and uh, Dan White thought that he might be assassinated or killed or whatever you want to call it by the gays. No, so that he, wasn't the reason he no. did it at all. There was a motivation there, wasn't there, uh, um, Tom? I think that he and the mayor had had words, or that the mayor was yeah, getting the I mayor mean, was he, getting was rid a, of him. That was it. Yeah, yeah, basically. White had quit his job, and then he went back to try to get it back. And yeah. when he was, when Moscone turned him down, uh, that's when he pulled out the uh, gun and shot him. Now, I when he, he went and I guess he shot Moscone first and then Milk second. Do you think he I shot remember. Milk because Milk was just in the way, or do no, you think, or did he milk. seek out Milk? He saw he he saw, he sought him out. Oh, okay. He hated yeah. Milk because because uh, uh, Moscone was inclined to give him the job back, and Milk said, "No, no way! Don't don't do that because it'll you know it'll shift it'll take the power away so, from the liberal." So so that being the case, uh, are we considering uh, not considering that it's a hate crime, that it wasn't a hate crime? It was just that he well, there, looked at these there was two no people. Such thing as, there was no such thing as hate crimes back in those days. Wasn't there? No, there was no law. Not really. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Not really. It was, it was a terrible day for San Francisco. It was lost a mayor, part. you lost Harvey Milk, who was very important to his community. Mm -hmm. uh, really represented the gays in San Francisco very well before City Hall and made them actually a, uh, a political power. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which you know was very important because if you've got political power, uh, you're going to get your way, you know. Diane Feinstein's career started that day, really. Really well, uh, you yeah. Know. <laughs> she became the mayor when when Moscone was murdered. Well, there was the old joke running around: Why is she so much again? Why is she so much for gun control? If it weren't for guns, she wouldn't be senator. That was yeah. A, that was, was a, a Will joke. Will Durst joke, as yeah. I remember. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but I mean, it, it was it was. Um, did I hear? Did I hear that one half of the Bay Bridge is now the Willie Brown Bridge? Oh, you were talking about that last night. Yeah, I it's the, heard actually either. yes, it's the it's actually the Western Span. Yeah, but why do you name it after somebody who's still alive? You know, I don't know. He got that thing built after after it broke. You know, after the earthquake. He got he got the money to get. Yeah, it but it's the eastern span that got rebuilt, not the that's not right. the western span. That's right, and, John. And, and what what span is the, the Willie Brown Bridge? The western side that's named for him, I think. Right. Yeah. But no? the, he the had nothing to do with that. Oh, oh right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't yeah. know. And there's a guy who wants to actually was actually campaigning to have the bridge named for Emperor Norton. Yeah. 
Yeah. Emperor, and, Emperor Norton. Yeah, he, because because because. Well, I do. Yeah. I don't know if we have time to go in the story of Emperor Norton. Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of <laughs> but, the wonderful. But basically, legends. the you know this the, this Emperor Norton had uh, decreed that there should be a bill a, a bridge built from San Francisco to what was then called Goat Island, mm -hmm. which is now known as Yerba Buena Island. Mm -hmm. And so that's the reason why this guy felt. That. Well, the thing is that, that Emperor Norton was a character. I guess it's the yes. best way to describe him, who dressed in finery with a plume and everything, dressed in a, his own made-up military outfit, yeah. and said he was what the Emperor of Mexico. Em Emperor, no, Emperor of the United States, Protector of Mexico. Protector of Mexico, <laughs> and uh, and he and, and he actually printed his own money. Yep. And and he ins and he insisted on his money being accepted everywhere. And people at one time he he went to to, to ride on the, I guess the Southern Pacific Railroad train, mm -hmm. and the conductor gave him a bad time. And he complained to the to the president. And the pres the president of the railroad says, from now on you can ride for free. <laughs> yeah. But he was a real character, and he was uh, a real character. And he yes. lived in San Francisco, and there are a lot of uh, little references to him in in San Francisco culture. Uh, mm -hmm. And this went around. When was this? The turn of the century, maybe, maybe earlier. It was, than that. Uh, yeah, it was it was more like the 1850s, 60s, 70s, like that. San Francisco is famous for creating wackos. Another wacko, yeah. kind of, was Hilly, uh, uh, Lily Hitchcock Coit, uh, who yes. built Coit Tower, mm -hmm. which he built in honor of the policeman, because she used to like to dress up as fireman. a man. A fireman. Fireman. Yeah. Fireman. 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 She used to like to dress up as a man and go to these male soirees and just hang out. And uh, 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 she, uh, she built the Coit Tower. Uh, in order to uh, honor the firemen who put out the fire during the 1906 earthquake. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, she says it was meant to look like a nozzle, but mm -hmm. it looks pretty much like a giant penis. Yeah. You know. Well, there's a lot of things that look like a giant penis to you lately, Alex. No, when I when I was a <laughs> kid about Amazon. When I was a kid, I used to live on Filbert Street in an apartment. And my bedroom looked at Coit Tower. And I remember after World War II, when the they didn't the lights came back on because you didn't have to have blackouts and everything. And the light came on. Here was this beautiful tower, all lit up, looking at me. And every day, I, every night, I would talk to it. I had an ongoing mm -hmm. relationship with it. And it wasn't until I studied Freud that I understood why. You know, it was just a giant penis to me. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, there you go. Now we got the bottom line. Yeah, now you got the I always, line. I always heard the coit that the the widow. I always heard that the, the lady that built Coit Tower. I'm looking it up now. Her husband was a firefighter. I don't think so. I'm looking it I up. I don't believe so. I don't remember. That's it. what I've always heard. Hell, I don't know. In fact, I don't even know if she was married. Yeah, that's she that's was, my memory, but she wasn't married. She wasn't married. Huh. Alex, did you go to high school in North Beach or? Yeah, no, I went to grade school in North Beach. I went to high school in Marin County. I, I, is uh, that another one of the weirdos that came out of San Francisco, the Alex Bennett? What, what, um, what, what elementary school did you go to? Uh, I went to Garfield School. Is it still there? Well, it's something else now, but it was a building right across the street from my. Uh, what, what what street was it on? It was on Filbert Street. Filbert and what? Uh, uh, right. Filbert, almost right at the top of Filbert Street. Oh, up uh, by Quake uh, Tower? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you wish you still had that house? Uh, well, it was an apartment. Well, um, according to according to Wikipedia, real quick, the Quake Tower Memorial Tower was dedicated it's still there. to volunteer firefighters who had died in San Francisco five major fires. Mm -hmm. okay. So I guess it wasn't. Okay. I've right. got to tell you, the people but, that But does me, it, did it say she was married? No. I oh, know. No, okay. she wasn't married. Anyway, hey, listen, we're running out of time. Hey, like Garfield's still there. Garfield School? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's called something else, though. No, it isn't. It's, it's Garfield. Alex Bennett Academy. Academy. It's, it, it, it's Garfield what? 
Elementary school. Elementary school. Okay. Well, still there after all these years. Hey, listen, I got to go. Uh, uh, Jeff, great having you here. Alan, good having you here. Tom, love to see you more often. You know, you really added to the show tonight, and I thank you for it. Uh, John Larkin, thank you. And Tony, thank you, everybody. Uh, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our... That's our uh, uh, rather small citizen panel for tonight because we don't have a lot of our regulars on tonight like Brian and Charlie and so on and so forth. But anyway, uh, be that as it may. I'll see you tomorrow night if I still have an apartment. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow night at, at, at uh, what, uh, 10.30. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And, and by the way, if you haven't been vaccinated... What the hell's keeping you? Bye.